Hello, 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 everyone. This is Reverend Tanika Steens, and I am the Mindful Coach. It's taken me some time to get used to saying that. So, Mindful Coach, somebody called me the podcast lady. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll roll with that. That's cool. But anyways, tonight, I have a very special guest with me. She goes by Rach. She's been through the gauntlet of health problems. These are her words, not mine, but I'm going to tell you, she is a warrior of mental health and panic attacks. And I didn't say warrior, like we worry, but I said warrior, like she wars with this. Neuropathy in her right leg starting five years ago. Just recently, Rach was plagued by migraines and a brain tumor, which she just had radiation for. You will not believe this superhero woman that is on this story. Oh, you can't. Okay, hold on. She says she can't hear me. I can hear you. You can't hear me. I don't know what happened. I can hear you. Hold on. I don't know what happened. I like lost. I can hear you. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know. Can you hear me? You want to start over? Yeah, hold on. Okay, there you are. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right, great, great, great. Sometimes, sometimes that happens, but um, do you hear a back? I might need to turn this down just a little bit because I, I hear feedback a little bit. Okay. Okay. I think we'll be fine. Okay. So we are back. No <laughs> worries. That's what happens. And, you know, just when I was talking to Rach about how it's raw, uncut, we just go with the flow. This happens. <laughs> it's, it's raw, uncut, we just go with the flow. But I was talking about um, a little bit of Rachel's background and how she was plagued with migraine and a brain tumor, and she just had radiation. But to look at this woman, you would not think or know that she has dealt with anything because she still has a smile on her face, because she still has a grateful heart, because she still gets up every single day and tends to her five children. I mean, seriously, <laughs> she, she's got a lot going on. And she lost a neuropathy pain from leg surgery, um, surgery. She looked for answers to calm the side effects. Lost with no answers in modern efforts, only masking everything, Rachel turned to study holistic and found answers. A lot of times we don't realize what we need is already surrounding us. We are asking doctors for all these answers, and we know the doctor that left us everything, right? Her philosophy is no matter what I go through, I want to be a beacon of hope for my patients. She is a CNA, you guys, and she worked through the whole entire COVID era. Not on, only that, she's going to tell you more about what she was dealing with as she was being a nurse, working through COVID, doing all of this. She's here to tell you her story. Without any further ado, please, Rachel, tell us who you are even more in your own words, what you do and why you do it, because you're just a phenomenal lady. I got the pleasure of talking to you the other day, and I'm like, don't tell me no more. I know, you were like, I'm don't, like, don't tell me no more. Quiet. Yeah. I want to know but, more later. Please, I'm going to sit back and let you have the floor now, and just take your time. So, um, I grew up in an abusive home. 
and um, my father was undiagnosed bipolar and um, I was the oldest of three kids and I was put into the parenting role and my father abused physically, emotionally, and um, just those words, you know, those ugly words the parents say but don't mean. And um, it would trickle down to my mother and she would abuse me also. And at the age of 16, one of my good friends killed himself. Um, and what's funny about that is that day I said I wanted to kill myself and he said he would protect me. And, you know, thinking back, he really did because I'm here. You know, even though he decided to leave this world, I'm here. No matter what I've been through, I'm here. And at the age of 16, after he killed himself, I ran away. And that was for about two weeks. I went into prostitution during that time. And um, came back home. And my parents sent me to go live with my grandparents for six months. And that got me away from pros prostitution, but it didn't get me away from a guy's advances. So I had many different boyfriends until the age of 18. At the age of 18, I found what was my husband and got pregnant with my first kid. Trying to deal with all this, I had another set, I had my first set of twins. So I bumped you up to three kids. Um, and my husband was unsupportive, wouldn't get a job, even though we were living in a one bedroom apartment. And I find out I'm pregnant again. The girls are about a year at this time, and I'm like, what am I going to do with a fourth child? I go to my parents' home and for Christmas and find out he hasn't done any of the paperwork to help us get a bigger place. So I'm like, okay, I'm pregnant with possibly my fourth child. I got to do something. M me and my kids need to survive. And I was undiagnosed bipolar at this time and found out I am pregnant with twins, my second set of twins. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I can do this, you know, because um, one thing I didn't tell you guys is when I was in 16 to 18, I was smoking, doing drugs, drinking, doing things I shouldn't be doing, you know. And when I met him, he said, if you want to be with me, that's one thing I'll truly be grateful for my ex-husband for is that he got me out of that. If you want to be with me, you can't be doing that stuff. So he credits himself, but I credit my children. He got me out of that moment, but my children kept me going to not do that kind of stuff because I didn't want to show them that kind of life because I had seen that kind of life and I want better for my children because for our children, we are the first thing they see in their life and no matter what social media brings to them, they are still looking at us every single moment about how are we dealing with them? How are we living through life? And what are we doing when we have health problems? So for myself, I find out that I'm having my second set of twins. I'm undiagnosed bipolar at this time. And... My grandma dies, who meant everything to me. Um, she died right around the same time that my third daughter in the second century went. And for me... I'm I sorry, you, you um, kind of blurred out. Can you repeat what you just said? Just repeat what you just said. I don't know. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I'll keep on going with my story and then I'll come back. Okay. Um, anyways, for my grandma passing away, that meant everything to me. But we in the whole family believe because my daughter was um, having failure to thrive that perhaps she left this world so my daughter had room to move into it. And um, I went cuckoo and my parents said, you need to take care of yourself in this moment so that these children don't have forever memories that you were doing all this stuff. And I said, okay. And I was gone from my children for six months, but it was the best six months I ever took for myself. I got my mental health that I needed, found out what I truly wanted in life. And even though I wasn't divorced from my husband because we were going back and forth, back and forth, coming back and forth into each other's lives until about 10 years ago, I knew what I wanted for myself. Um, I've got in my appendix out and that was right when I was having my kids and my mom and dad gratefully took care of them. About eight years ago, um, I met my now fiance and, um, he's just a light and he's such a hard worker for this family. And he's my co-host on my podcast and my children they, he's got that old school parenting style. So my children bump heads with him all the time, <laughs> but he, he really has that kind of heart that he wants to be a good father for them. And he's taken on the five kids and given them every opportunity that he can. And when I had my surgery five years ago for varicose veins, um, it went wrong and I got neuropathy in my right leg and I had no idea what I was going to do. And because Western medication for chronic people sometimes just mask it. It doesn't heal it it masks it. And unfortunately, I'm not going to live that way. The medication was not taking care of the pain. Um, some of the medication was making me high, and I'm like, I don't want this. I didn't feel safe being on the road while I was high. I don't know how people can make that choice, but I hope they make a better one in the future. And then um, I was like, my kids are still looking at me. What I'm making choices through this pain and everything else. I have to find the right healing. And that's when I turned to Eastern medicine, holistic, and it changed my world and really opened my eyes. And I'm like, I love Western medicine. Otherwise I wouldn't be a CNA during a pandemic, <laughs> but you can pair them together. And when I got my education, I'm like, how many people out there are not educated? And so Last year, we started my podcast that I've been wanting to do since that time. And we've had great hosts on there. And even Chris has been more educated because we teach on diversity. We teach that Western can be paired with Eastern medicine to make you your best advocate. So, and then two years ago, I found out about this tumor and um, it's small enough that they need, I mean, it's, it's in the wrong area. So they needed to do something about it and it was growing too fast, but it was small enough that they're hoping that they got it with one treatment. So at the beginning of this month, I had that one treatment and I find out in three months if it's gone. You said three months. All right, I'll come back. Everybody. That is just compelling, the story that Rachel is telling us, everything that she's been through. And she had to go out. She's going to come back in because of the sound. But when we get her back in here, 
and we can um, just ask her some more questions on how Eastern medicine versus Western medicine um, was able to change her life. And just by educating ourselves on things that are out there that we can do that are yeah. not um, traditional, but things that are holistic and that are more on a spiritual wavelength. So Rachel's back with us. And I was just saying how, you know, you were talking about the Eastern medicine and how it changed your life when you became educated on it. And a lot of times we're afraid of things that we don't know. Yeah. And we lack this knowledge because we don't oftentimes seek it. I do have a question that I want to ask you. Absolutely. Do you think what you hear as a child, what you go through as a child, reflects our behavior, mm -hmm. shapes us internally, and causes us to inherit these health problems? I think it even um, inherits to our children when we don't learn the right tools to do it unhealthy. Mm -hmm. That's where you get that generational stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause you often wonder, is this a learned behavior? Cause my, my grandson, it's, it's crazy, but he's two months old yeah. and his sinuses are stopped up mm -hmm. two months old. Yeah. All I got to do is lay him on my lap, put his head back, squeeze these drops of saline in his nose. No problem. Right. He has no clue what's going on. He's just going to lay there. I'm just going to put the drops in yeah. nothing, no harm, no foul, because he has no clue what's going on. That baby was fighting me tooth and nail. Yeah. Instinct. Where did he learn to defend himself like that at two months old? Where does that come from? I know. He just got here. Who? There's no harm around you, but yet and still, yeah. you're defensive. And who taught you that? Where does this come from? So what I have to say to that is um, I was, um, when I was pregnant with um, just Denzel, I knew that the mother's voice can be heard by the child. And I would read to Denzel as much as I could when he was in my womb. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was asked a question by a news team when Denzel was about three years old, should parents be giving some um, music of Mozart in the hospital when they are leaving? And I said, there's a better use for that money, but I totally believe that parents Parents should be doing that at womb. And now that I'm studying Eastern medicine more, I'm finding out that the nervous system even affects the babies. So absolutely, yes. And your two-year-old grandson is going to feel that. And if you have ever seen the movie The Blind Side, he was... It wasn't brains. It was defense mm -hmm. that he had to learn. And yeah. the thing is, is that I've done a couple episodes on generational, stopping that generational thing, healing yourself so you don't push it on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. I but learned that. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, absolutely. I mean, uh. our children feel it inside of us. Absolutely, because my mom lives with us. And so I go, there's three generations of women in this household. And I laugh because things are so much different than when I was a child, but they're so much more different than when she was a child. And now my children have no clue on, I remember when they saw a wall phone and they're like, what is this thing? But my mom does not get that sometimes. And she'd be like, well, in my day. And I'm like, you know what? Listen, I bought into that as a child for so long. But guess what? We got to break that narrative. Yeah. It's no longer those days. We've got to change our way. Because when we start absorbing that, and I'm like, thank God we don't have to do that anymore. Thank God we've been afforded these opportunities. Thank God I was able to graduate from college and my kids were able to see me graduate from college. But now maybe they'll graduate from college and their kids won't see them graduate from college. <laughs> they'll just see a picture of them graduating from college. Yeah. You know? I'm I like, if, if I would have graduated... And um, went on to high school, um, went on to college after I graduated from high school. It wouldn't have took me till I was 47 to get my first bachelor's degree, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and decide because at that time it was just like, get out of job, get out of school, get a job. You need to work, you need to. But 
I didn't come from a family that was like, you need to go to school and you need to do this. No, I came from, uh, we are going to go get a job and you're going to work and you're going to, and if you don't work, what's a business? Who, who, you're not going to start a business. My grandfather told me that you're never going to start your own business. You're a woman and you're always going to work for a white man. And I was just determined. He told me I was rebellious. And so I'm just like, ha, he would never believe I worked for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we go through things as children that we learn and we get these behaviors and then we go seeking this knowledge that's ours. Cause I think our generation is that generation of, we want to do something different to bring back what was lost. Yeah, I, I truly believe that's what our generation is all about. Yeah. We're trying to reconnect and we're doing it through healing because we have been hurt, yeah. but we're not our mothers. We're not our grandmothers. Yeah. And we don't sneak and hide. We don't brush stuff under the rug. We yeah. don't act like we're not in pain and turn our heads. Yeah. We scream out, hey, I'm hurting. Yes. I need some help. Yeah. And for so long we were taught. It's so funny. I did a, um, a meditation the other day on self-advocacy. And it was talking about how, you know, if you speak up for yourself, then you're just being rebellious. You're not being ladylike. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? We are nurturers. We are passionate but we've got to start taking back our yeah. health because we give it away. We give our health away yeah. by letting things pile on us and beat us down. And, and we can't take on and take on and take on. And the day I was asked, who told you you had to change my life? Cause I was like, I don't have to. Yeah. Nobody's ever told me I didn't have to. Right. But who told me I had to? <laughs> <laughs> I I just guess I did, you know? Right. And so just no, having... No, we're told to brush it off and put a smile on our face. If people ask us how we're doing, we're supposed to say, oh, I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and honestly, is it, well, how are you doing? Well, you know, I got this going on and that going on. Okay, we do. We do have this and that going on. But you know what? We we can go through that all day long. With that. <laughs> How are you living? And yep, you got all that negative stuff going on. And each of us have our own negative stuff that the good Lord or creator of whoever you celebrate puts on us. Because, yeah. you know, he says, I'm not going to give you anything you can't carry. Because he's going to help you through it. Our own. Yeah, he's going to help you to carry it. And when we learn that, we're not alone in this thing. We think that having people surrounding us, but. He gave us a power within that if we harness in on that power, we can be connected and, yes. and come back together. But we spend so much time being broken. And I, the guest I had earlier today talked about this process and how the long suffering part of it, you have to experience these things that we go through, yep. but it's a process. And often we go through this process, but we don't experience it. We, we don't look at what it is. We try to become what it is. Yeah. And when we become what it is, we can't see. We can't see it. Yeah. I also believe that if you haven't learned the first time, you're going to get a second. You're going to get a third. You're going to get a fourth and, until oh, you yeah. learn it. Like, oh, I'm going through this again. Oh, I'm going. I didn't get it yet. And and I, I know so much what you're saying because there's been so many times that I'm like, oh, I don't have to experience that anymore. Yeah. I get it now. I remember when. But now I know how to handle that. So now yeah. I've graduated. Now, oh, really? Now, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, seriously, you really, you really think, you really like me that much to think that I can handle these challenges. <laughs> yeah. But he created you in his image to take on things. And when I think about, okay, because we are in Holy Week, you know, Sunday was Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy yeah. Week. And I think about, you came down to this earth for 33 years to show us the right way to do these things yeah. but you left here scarred and battered and beaten and bruised and you took it all on and you never once said yeah i don't like you i hate you i don't want to do this i give up i'm divorcing you i'm leaving you i'm yeah. abandoning you he stayed yeah oh my god and look at us because know. you have that inside of you you're still here now think about that. If he wouldn't have done all of that, we wouldn't have the opportunity to say we made it through because yep. we'd be dead and buried in our own sin. Yeah. We ain't got a chance to 
be able to re- be redeemed from that. Yeah. So look what you were brought from, even though it sucks. Oh my God, I couldn't imagine <laughs> what you have to go through. But then you might look at my life and be like, ooh, thank you for what I had to go through and not what right. you had to go through. Yeah. But we all have to go through something. So, yeah. And that's what connects us into knowing that are you going to lay down and just be like, life is over? Or are you going to get up and say, you know what? That didn't defeat me. I'm not going to waste another day. Sitting in the because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and how old are your babies now? Let's talk about that. 24, two or 18, <laughs> two or 16. So. <laughs> I mean, my fiance wishes they would get out. <laughs> tell me about it. I got it. I got a seven-year-old in the house. I got a seventeen-year-old, a fourteen-year-old. She's about to be fifteen, and a seven-year-old. She's about to be eight. The seventeen-year-old, we got nine months till she's eighteen. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we got one in college. She'll be home for the summer. Okay. And I'm just like, one said she was never coming back. She's been back. Yeah. Every time she gets a break, are we coming to get her? Well, the thing You're right there. You know, I've learned through all this. I was glad to have a good mom and dad supportive system because um, they really changed who they were from my childhood when my father got diagnosed. I still had problems with my mom, but you know what? It's she lives three hours away, and I did a barrier for myself saying I have to look at her negative. Because, um, and what I mean by that is when she has health problems going on, she's the one to sit in the mug. Just sit there and complain about it instead of, I'm going to do these tools and get myself up and out. Yeah. And, you know, what can you say to someone? Because I believe in reconciling people back together. Reconciling yeah. them. And sometimes it's tough, but it's not what we think it should be. That's not unconditional love sometimes i don't know if um you have heard of um and i always want to say paula joyce myers because her name is paula but (laughs) Joyce myers and a story she tells about her mother and her father and how she forgave them and she took care of her parents you know and and i'm like you know there are so many people that have been like yeah no not gonna do that that's not gonna happen but can you talk to someone because they might look at it and say, well, you know, Joyce Myers, she's Joyce Myers. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got something more than what, what I've got. And that's why she was able to do that. But you're not Joyce Myers. No. You're Rachel. I am Rachel. And you understand what that looks like. I do. Can you speak to that? So for myself, I had to forgive my father once he realized all the pain that he had caused me. Uh, I mean, I was in my 40s. I had lost my job for my first time. And I'm like, oh, my God, my father is going to have a fit. And he said, Rachel, I'm fine. Are you okay?" And I said, you don't understand. I have these thoughts going in my head about how you want me to act. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I am so sorry I ever put that energy on you. And me, I, I have to say at age 18, it's ugly, but I didn't care if my father passed away the next day. And now at 43, I've become love and light with my father and said, okay, that stuff is in my past. We have a different relationship now. Yeah. And so a lot of times people believe if you are a liar, you're a liar. If you're a cheater, you're a cheater. If you're an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic. If you're an abuser, you're an abuser. What do you believe about that? My children, um, when Biden was became president, said, Look at all the stuff he said about hmm, racism and all this other stuff in the past. He's so backwards, you know? And I'm like, no. He was educated and he changed. And knowledge is power. Yeah. And if we seek the power that gives the knowledge, then we'll get the knowledge and we'll have the power. I mean, you know, it's it's just all, it's all in the same ball. 
it all goes together. Yeah. But we try to separate the two. And and oftentimes our ego can get in the way with that. You said you ran away from home at 16. Yeah. When you ran away from home, because see, this is the thing. People will do only what their limitations are. Because mm -hmm. I might have did some things, but yeah, I'm going to go to bed in my own. And I don't care how mad these folks that made me. I don't care how much. I'm not going to do that. I don't feel like I need to do that. But there are people out there that may not have it bad at all and feel like I can't stay in this place another night because I don't want to listen. I don't want to be obedient. I don't want to follow the rules. Or there's people that's like, I can't stay in this place one more night because I'm not safe. I don't want to listen to this. Yeah. I can't be obedient to this. What do I do? Yeah. For myself, I had to run away to have my parents wake up and say, we can't treat her like that. And it took many years for them to be educated enough to understand that. I'm not sure my mother's fully there, but that's where you build your boundaries. You deal with difficult people until your boundaries hit, and then you step away. When their family of course, you're going to have to come back, but then that's where you stay at your boundary. You don't move your boundary around. You say, this is what I'm willing to deal with. If it's going to be really, really negative, I'm not dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like you said, forgiveness is a key part of that. Yep. Not that you get forgiven, but that you are able to say, I forgive. I'm putting that behind me. I feel better. You feel lighter. And like you said, you, you said you're light in love with your father. Yeah. It's not a heavy burden to be in no. love with your father. Because it could be the fact of, you know, some people you encounter or you have to go near, you're like, you got to take some deep breaths and approach yeah. this situation. And it's like, it's tough. And you're, that's, is that tough love? Because now it's like, I'm coming. But, uh, but when you yeah. can go, I'm flowing. To this thing i'm embracing this i don't feel any angst or any animosity what is the process to getting there can you speak to someone that maybe is like just fed up said no more they will never not turn it around can you talk about that process sure so for myself i did a psyche that said what you what's my intent and my intent was to set my boundary and allow love in, but don't allow people to walk over me. Now, you don't have to do a psyche thing. You can make your own boundaries. When you set that intent, other people will first try to walk all over it. But you keep your boundary and they'll eventually say, oh, okay, I'm not acting like that. And that's what my mom's learning. She's learning, Rachel's only going to deal with me when I talk in this level. When I start going here and here and here and here beyond her boundaries, she's going to step away. Yeah. She's going to block me on the phone. She's not going to come and visit me. She's not going to do these things because Rachel oh. doesn't want to live in that. She said, you block your mom. I have blocked my mom. <laughs> the one that gave me life. I have oh, blocked you know, her someday. And this is, this is the thing. A lot of times we don't even understand we're in toxic situations because we're so familiar with them. And when you start to come out of them, some people, because they've been part of the toxicity, yep. seem to think that you're being you're being rude or disrespectful or you're out this of This is line. not one of the 10 commandments. You honor your mother and your father. This isn't that. No. This I isn't love that. my mother. She gave me life. Yes. And children do not tend to blame their parents. They blame internally. Yes. Yes. So it's not that I don't love my mother. It's that I will not live in that muck with her anymore. Yeah. And you know what? And that's the thing, because I'm like, when I can back up what I'm saying, because we're a Bible believing house and I can bring this to you and I can back it up <laughs> what I'm saying, we have no more argument. 
we, we just, you know, and I'm not going to argue that with anybody, especially in my own household. But the thing is, this is a new day. It's a new time. We have to have a new mind frame. We've been beat down, battered, broken, and abused because, like you said, it's generational. And it didn't just start with us. It didn't just start when your mom was born. It didn't start with her mom was born. This goes back. Yes. Th these are seeds that's been planted. And what do seeds do? They continue to grow. <laughs> but they continue. It's okay. But they continue to harvest. I mean, you know, because what happens is, Birds pick up seeds and they drop them in other places and they fall on that ground and they start to grow in that environment. And then they start to grow in this environment brought yeah. behind from what they brought with them from that, from that last environment. Yeah. I mean, you know, and so when you start to, and, and it's like, everybody is so, Oh, everybody's so woke these days. No, mm -mm. it's not about being no, woke. Generations that took to get there. You think, but we've known, we just didn't know. Right. And now it's like, you have an opportunity, nothing and nobody can stop you because you create yeah. what you want in your life, what you don't want in your life. It's okay to say no. It's okay to take a time out. Nobody has a right to hurt you or abuse you. Just like that baby. I said, if he would have got to the point, he would have jumped off my lap. He would have squirmed himself away from me. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing that we've got to understand. He doesn't know what's good for him. No, but we know that that's good for him, but yeah. it's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to hurt a little bit. And it's going to mm -hmm. even make us feel a little hurt yeah. having to do that. Oh my but in goodness. the long run, my he's going to be better. 12 years old and five people had to hold him down for a flu shot. Yeah. 12 yeah. years old. But I knew where that stemmed from on him because when he was little, little, he had a lot of problems with asthma and they could never get that IV right. Yeah. See? It, 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 you know, children start getting their permanent memories and it's usually a negative memory first at the age of three and four. Yeah. And for him all that asthma stuff started going away at the age of four. So it was like after his memories, but he felt it subconsciously. What's yeah. wrong with me? And your subconscious is there to protect you. Yeah. It stops you from doing a lot of things because you get into that mode of fight or flight or freeze or what should I do type of thing. Yeah. And you learn that at a early age. Even beyond, you know, and you become yeah. good at it. My guest earlier said today, we are great actors because we learned to put on this show and to put on this face yes. and to keep on going through it all. And I know so many people that have neuropathy that the the pain they talk about, but here you are dealing with all that, and then you find out you've got a brain tumor. I got a brain tumor. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> I was once told by a friend that I you know, worked at an nursing home many years ago, if I had to deal with your life, I'd go crazy. Oh. <laughs> and the thing that I didn't tell you was right before I got the laser at my head for radiation, they pulled up my teeth. <laughs> I got dentures in. <laughs> and my dentist is like, how can you be smiling now? <laughs> well i mean hey have a total transformation sometimes yeah. we don't even know what's going on we don't know no. but we're led and we're, we're being guided when we allow ourselves to yeah. and so what's the most important thing right now that you've learned that if you had to look back at that 16 year old girl that ran away Mm -hmm. What would you speak into her and let her know for what what's going on right now? What what do you think you'd say? Man, you know, what I would tell her in my 30s is different than what I would tell her in my 40s. I agree. And in my 30s, I would say don't go with that man. He's not going to be good for marriage. 
what you're telling yourself not to get married is the right thing. But then I won't have my five babies either. You know, so what I would tell her in this moment is you're going to go through the muck. And it's okay to put your head up and say that you're going to keep on going. Don't tell other people that you're going doing fine when you're not doing fine. But don't live in that muck either. Know that if you push yourself through it, more might come. But you've got the strength to keep going. Absolutely. Rachel, you are such a kind spirit and a beautiful soul. and. It's so weird because I don't know, but I know I know you before this podcast. I know we spoke on the phone, but I'm you just look so familiar. And so I think we're in other social cir- um, circles together as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm just glad to see you face to face because we've talked yeah. on the phone and everything. But just to have that connection and really know who you are yeah. and be able to. I, I just feel like a kindred, kindred spirit with you because yeah. of everything that you said now and what you said before and just. I, I understand where you're coming from. Yep. And it's like, often we don't get to really be heard because we keep on going or we, we do chalk it up like everything's okay. Mm-hmm. But then people look at you and go, yeah, but that's you. That, that works for you. And, and I don't have what you have. What would you tell those people? I would tell them, you don't have what I have. You don't. But you know what? You do have your skills of how you got through your junk before. I don't lie to people. I think it's the rudest, even white lies. Um, Story with that, one patient's family was marking her um, attends because she was at the end of life. And they asked me, did you change her? I said, I turned her. I gave her mouth swabs. I gave her everything she needed, but her attends was dry. So no, I didn't change her. And the nurse came to me after the family left and said, you told the truth. And I said, there was no need to lie. I didn't know that they had marked them. I had no idea that they had marked them, but they were, mm, they were looking for that honesty from you, knowing that you cared for their loved one. So everybody has the opportunity to tell the truth. Everybody has the opportunity to walk through the muck. You walk through it, you know, when somebody's yelling at you at the street and you're making a better choice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You have such a beautiful story. What does Rachel have going on with Love Infusion Health? Tell us about this. So for my Love Infusion Health, it's Infusion Health, and it's bringing diversity, Eastern and Western health together. Um, And the best way I can explain bringing Eastern and Western health together is my daughter broke her leg at the growth plate. She had to have surgery because she's a minor and she's still growing, you know. But what did I do when that cast came on? Off, I gave her frankincense. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, people, if you want to know more, because that's a cliffhanger right there. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, that was one of the gifts that they brought to Jesus. So if you want to know more about how holistic medicine, Eastern medicine can change your life. I'm telling you, there's a whole nother world of understanding and knowledge out there on how we can heal ourselves, mind, body, and soul internally, externally with things that are natural Yes, that we can find right in our backyard, I'm sure. (laughs) Okay. So, um, Rach, tell them how to get with you. So, um, for people that are in uh, wanting to interview, really have those skills in the Western, Eastern, or diversity, they can email me, email me at loveinfusionhealth at gmail.com. For those people that want to listen, I'm everywhere. I'm even on Audible. So, go ahead and listen. Infusion Health. Infusion Health. 
audible and love infusion health at gmail.com get with her because i'm telling you the way of the future is now yeah we're in the present moment we don't know what's going to happen we don't know what's going to come but we know that it's not going to go back to what it was no no <laughs> no not. and it's not. as as politics get heavier as wars get more as prices go up medicine is gonna get scary yeah people you gotta look out for your own health you do you gotta investigate this stuff that they're trying to give you yeah you might not even need that is affecting something else that something that's herbalistic or holistic can do for you and can cover all of these things and first of all, you got to start with clearing your mind. Get, you yeah. got to get your mind in the right place. Yeah. You got to get your mind in the right place. You got to want to change consciously. You got to want to be better within your mind and your body and your soul. You got to want to not erase the past, yeah. but just accept what it is. Look at it, process it, let it go. And and know, are you going to be able to just drop things right now and be like, <laughs> I'm over it? No. Process. It's a process. It's a process. And, and you don't beat yourself up. Go ahead. Um, what I was going to say is even doctors have told me that often for one medication that you need, they are giving you two medications for the side effects. Mm-hmm. So if you're taking yeah. five pills times two side effect pills, look at what you're doing to yourself. It's breaking you down. And there are natural things out there that I can guarantee you in just a couple of days will start to fix things that are out of sorts. Things will start to mend on the, and start to heal on their own. And even if you cut yourself, you'll heal faster. You'll, you'll um, stop bleeding faster. So many different things, women in their menstrual cycles, eating cleaner, You'll have a cleaner flow. I'm just telling you, there's so many things that are beneficial. Mm -hmm. So Rachel is an expert. Get with her. (laughs) She wants to infuse you with some knowledge that can help you. And you don't just jump right into anything. Investigate. Look into it. I would not say I'm an expert, but I do get those people that know what they're talking about on there. Absolutely. So that's where you go. You go to the people that know how to get the information that makes you the expert. You know where to go. (laughs) Keep doing it. But thank you so, so very much. Um, We look forward to see what you've got going on and helping people. I know a young lady that I definitely would love to connect you with that is she's um, she's um, younger, but she is just so it doesn't matter the age. It matters the education. But that's what I'm saying. And people that's what I'm saying on different spectrums. We can reach different people at different levels. Yeah. And where she's at, she can reach people, reach the millennials, because she's a millennial, but she's yeah. a millennial that is thinking like, okay, how can I be more effective? What can I do to make a difference? And not in an aspect of this is how we used to do it or this is how we should do it. But look, if we work together, if yeah. we if we see these things that are afforded to us and we help each other out, share knowledge. Yeah. If she can reach those people, we can reach people in between and higher or whatever. We'll yeah. get there. Bring so. on. <laughs> yeah. But I thank you for um, sharing your story because being vulnerable is something that is often hard for us to do, to okay. open up and to be able to really come to terms with that. And I realize that when I'm able to talk about something without crying about it, then okay success i've made it past that yeah. but some things are like oh it still hurts too bad yeah but eventually if you just keep on telling your story yeah. if you keep on accepting and realizing what it is and processing it and eventually yourself yeah you'll get through it without the tears and then you'll start having tears of joy knowing that you made it through right yeah all right what else would you like to say before we jump off of here um, goodness, I, I am just so grateful for this opportunity. I really want to thank you for that. 
because some of my story wasn't the easiest. Some of, a lot of people don't know my whole story. And I just figured it was the best opportunity to really release all that. Wow. Get an education moment for all those that are going through it. That's what happens on this show. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just, it, it does. It, it happens. Something happens. It's a, a spiritual movement. And that's why I say I don't have anything to do with it. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But whatever moves you is going to move somebody. Yeah. Because somebody out there needed to hear that. Yep. There was a lady, and I, I'm telling you, it's so funny. There was a lady that came on here, said she was planning her death, was writing it out, sit down at the table. The guy I interviewed today, the guy I interviewed today said he was planning his death. Two different people, mm -hmm. two different walks of life, two different backgrounds. And here you are. Here you come. And you were planning your life. You're like, I'm getting ready to do something. I'm going to make it out of this. Yeah. And again, they're all so similar. And we have to go through something. Just to what are we I, living I was for? Really scared to have the radiation. I was terrified because that's how my grandma passed when she started radiation. But I knew how she passed. I planned my body accordingly. So I went past so I could continue to have my life. And you you read the, what I had put. I want to be a positive influence for my patients and be an education for my listeners. That's what I want. Absolutely. And see your life, we go through things we're going to change. The butterfly is just not the butterfly. It has to be a caterpillar first. Yeah. It has to go through some changes. Sometimes it's tough. But it all works out in the end. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I feel blessed by hearing this. I've been infused with some information that we've got to have a better understanding of who we are in our mind, in our soul, in our body, how to connect with that and how to holistically enrich ourselves with things that are good for us. Yes. Sometimes it might not be good to us, no. <laughs> but it's good for us. And once we learn that, oh, it's not so bad, it gets better. It gets better because we, we learn to carry burdens and they get easier, mm -hmm. right? We learn to keep on taking on drama and we just deal with it. We learn to keep getting abused and we're okay with it. You're right. So how about start doing things that are good for right. us that are going to be more beneficial. What I have to say is I'm looking to doing a future episode on my podcast on how to be your best advocate. And the way I mean that is I work in the hospital. There's some patients or patients' families that are yelling at the nurses, the doctors, the aides, and everything else. And it's a very scary time. You don't know what you're dealing with, and they're not giving you the answers fast enough. But you know what? Yelling at us isn't going to make us walk into that room any faster. What's going to help is we know what's going on with you. We know the whole truth of what's going on with you. And you're patient with us while we try to find the answers for you. Because that's what we're there for. Yeah. Well... Thank you for being a servant and having a servant's heart and continue to be that blessing because more nurses like you will affect how people react to the nurses. Yeah. When they when they have great nurses that come in like you, then they're going to think twice before because they know who's taking care of their loved one. And so we just thank you for leading the way, setting an example, and just being that beacon of light that you want to be so yeah. you can help educate and inform others and keep up the great job. And we know that you're going to do some great things and you've already touched some lives and you're going to continue to touch lives. So yeah. when you're writing a book, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, hey, you got to get that stuff in a book because I'm telling you what it'll sell. <laughs> I I felt a presence over me telling me that I needed to write a book and you're just, more of that getting in my face. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, you didn't tell me that. So, but thank you so, so very much for coming on tonight. Of course. Um, 
we will have you on um, again, hopefully in the future. So I'd love to have you on a mindful meditation or something like that, just to tell people how to, you know, yeah, I'd love to have you back. So thank you. I'll be in touch with you. Hang out with me while I get us off of here. All right. Sounds great. All right. I can't wait to have you on my podcast. Too. I know. I'm excited. It's coming up. <laughs> Not long. It's coming up. I get to be on the other end. Yeah, you All do. right, everybody. Thank you. Stay tuned and check out Infusion Healing. Tell them again your podcast. Infusion or Infusion Health on Infusion any podcast Health. that you listen to. Anyway. Any and give a review. Yes, please. Five stars. Please. Five stars. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. All right. I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. All right. Bye, hun. <laughs>